At the end of this video, I will discuss the battery chemistries being utilized in this new factory. I've discovered what they are. There is a new semi-solid state battery, which will be used in aviation aircraft. No joke. New lithium battery technology that you've probably never heard of. Lithium metal batteries, right? that actually have been proven to work in the real world, to have higher energy density than lithium ion phosphate batteries, will last just as long, work in colder and hotter temperatures, and have a much higher energy density. These batteries don't need nickel, they don't need cobalt. Honestly, this new Gigafactory is a game changer globally, not just for Australia, not just for Australian EVs and Australian aircraft, but actually for everyone. This changes absolutely everything. You need to watch this. You need to pay attention because this is the future of the electric car. Australia is the world's largest supplier of lithium, a critical battery metal. Though it currently sends almost all of that lithium to China without even refining it, where the Chinese turn it into batteries. And then they make billions of dollars from the sales of those batteries. Now, if you're questioning that fact, just have a look at CATL's financial report from the last 12 months. Have a look at their profits. They're astronomical. The Asian nation currently has about 1,000 gigawatts, in fact, more than that now, of cell manufacturing capacity. That's more than 80% of the world's total. However, that's about to change. In fact, one of the world's largest battery gigafactories is about to be built here in my hometown of Melbourne, Australia. It's hard to believe, but it's actually true. Hello, my friends, and welcome to the channel. I'm the Electric Viking. Great to see you. Welcome to all the new subscribers to the channel and welcome back everyone else. Now, thank you to our Patreon supporters. Really couldn't do it without you. Thanks to um, some issues with my family. I've told you guys what those are on other videos. I've put a link in the description below. It's been a bit harder for me to make videos over the last couple of months. So it's been quite a challenge. So without that support on Patreon and the YouTube members to the channel, thank you guys as well. Without you guys, it would have been very hard for me to continue making videos, which I love doing. So thank you for your support. Now, if you want to help support the channel, I'll put some links in the description below to our Patreon page and our YouTube members page. Now this new battery factory, by the way, one of the things I love about it is this. The new batteries won't use cobalt or nickel. Seriously, how good is that? And it's gonna also avoid any materials coming from Russia. So the company plans to source its lithium raw materials from mines in Australia and to utilize refined lithium from Australia and from the United States. So where exactly is this factory gonna be built? Well, it's gonna be built in Geelong, which is actually around an hour away from Melbourne itself. Now the goal is to create one of the world's largest gigafactories, eventually creating the capacity at that factory to build 30 gigawatts of batteries per year. To give you some context on that, Ford plans on having 60 gigawatt hours of batteries within the next couple of years. Now, what will these batteries be for? Well, the company says the batteries will be for both electric cars and for energy storage. Now, I suspect the predominant purpose for these batteries would be energy storage because that market in Australia is as absolutely enormous. Why? We have a crazy amount of renewable energy being built out. We just don't have one thing, and that is the batteries to store all that energy. For example, Solar energy and wind generation are rising at an incredible pace in Australia. So fast, in fact, that it's predicted that all fossil fuels will be dead in Australia when it comes to electricity by the year 2035, with all of our coal power plants shutting down by then. Construction in Avalon, which is near Geelong and near the airport, is slated to begin in the second half of 2023, meaning not very far away, only six months with the goal of producing batteries equal to two gigawatt hours annually in the second half of 2024, six gigawatt hours in 2026, and 30 by 2030. Now, as operations expand to full capacity, the factory is expected to employ an estimated 1,500 to 2,000 people directly. It should also be great for the copious amounts of lithium mined in Australia's sandy inner regions. 
Production equipment for the two gigawatt production line has already been secured with binding contracts and secured funding. And the equipment is scheduled to arrive in Australia in late May 2023. Now the company haven't said what type of batteries they'll be producing, but considering they won't be using nickel or cobalt, and they will be using lithium, it's almost guaranteed those batteries will be lithium iron phosphate batteries. The company behind this mission is called Recharge Industries. They're actually a startup and they're drawing funds from a Manhattan and Geelong based investment firm scale facilitation, founded and led by David Collard, known as the youngest partner in PwC New York headquarters history. Recharge Industries has engaged listed professional services giant Accenture to get the design and build underway immediately. The two companies say they are now moving the project into the detailed engineering phase, which will lay the foundation of the facility's construction. In other words, this new Gigafactory is actually a done deal. Accenture will advise on the layout, including utility planning and setup of production lines. The company will assist in procuring and shipping required equipment, conduct final tests of all line equipment, and provide ongoing process and product engineering support. Now, keep in mind, Robin Denholm, who is the chairman of Tesla, said this was a great idea. She said, why are we sending all this lithium over to China only for them to then use that to add value, to make batteries, to refine lithium, and to literally make billions of dollars from that lithium? Well, this changes the game for us in Australia. Establishing a sovereign manufacturing capability to produce state-of-the-art lithium-ion battery cells is critical to Australia's renewable energy economy, meeting national demand, generating export income and securing supply chains, said Recharge Industry CEO Rob Fitzpatrick. Our factory, which we're building with the assistance of Accenture's engineering and capital projects, expertise and underpinned by C4Vs, a key technology partner, IP and battery technology will create thousands of jobs and attract large scale investment from key players in Australia, the Indo-Pacific region and other parts of the world. Now, while making this video, I actually discovered the battery chemistry that they're going to use at this factory. It's not exactly 100% confirmed, but considering this is the same company that has unveiled this technology, I would say it's very likely. The batteries produced will be called C4V, Liza, which is a cobalt and nickel free lithium ion cell technology with 40 to 50% higher energy density and five times more power density than lithium ion phosphate batteries. That's insane. In other words, you could put a battery half the size of a lithium ion phosphate battery pack into an EV and it would still have more range than a lithium ion phosphate battery pack. That is next level. So, what actually is it? Well, C4V's LISA technology encompasses an in-house patented battery cell design that allows OEMs to bypass modules and build the pack directly. This platform includes designs that include long and slim cells, a lot like BYD's blade battery, with super fast charging and discharge capabilities without losing the energy density benefits. In addition, this they say allows them, or it allows OEMs, as in car manufacturers, to achieve maximum cell to pack translation of performance. Now, Liza comes with an industry-first tabless advanced prismatic cell design that has in-situ cooling loop to facilitate efficient temperature operations ranging from minus 40 degrees Celsius to up to 90 degrees Celsius, assisting in extra fast charging. So the tethered edges of the module actually come with a solid structural design that enable mechanical stability. And the design's high modularity allows it to cater for stringent market requirements without any bias for power or energy needs. What does this mean? Well, energy density of 228 watts per kilo, power density of 2000 kilowatt per kilo, module free battery pack, 190 watts per kilo at the pack level. That's very, very high energy density. LISA simplifies the module structure and has been proven to increase volume utilization rate of a battery pack by 30%. In addition, apparently they say it's the best fit for high speed processors supporting ultra fast manufacturing solvent free coating speeds of 100 beaters per minute, thereby massively reducing the costs to the tune of 20% in terms of production. So even though this factory is based in Australia where obviously labor is more expensive because of the efficient way of producing these batteries, and the automated way they can be produced, 
the cost actually could be comparable to a gigafactory in China. The company says that by using its in-house patented C4V's BMLMP batteries of biomineralized lithium mixed metal phosphate technology, LISA enables lithium ion cells at 3.9 volts and the inherent oxygen deficient BMLMP not only augments battery safety, but delivers a voltage that is at least 20% higher than lithium ion phosphate formulations currently widely being used in the car market. Now, Liza says that their new batteries actually also have another advanced battery called the IM3MY, and the C4V are closely working with a few OEMs to integrate this technology into various applications, including the grid, electric vehicles, and as well as electric aircraft. However, here's where things start to get really, really interesting. C4V actually have working prototypes that have been showcased publicly of their solid state batteries with 380 watts per kilogram energy density. They say that these new batteries, which are able to replace more than 80% of the liquid electrolyte with a solid electrolyte producing a semi-solid state technology, have an energy density of 380 watts per kilo and actually can be mass manufactured now. The technology will provide a 70% range increase for every electric car that employs the solid state battery. This means that the average electric car could use these batteries and get 510 miles of range using a battery pack about a similar size to what we're seeing in standard range Model 3 and Model Y vehicles today and what we see in the BYD Addo 3. In other words, it's next level. However, they are targeting manufacturing a better version possibly at this factory in Melbourne. They're saying they're going after 400 watts per kilo and 750 watts per liter milestone, and they expected to actually achieve that ability in 2019, meaning more than likely they're already there and potentially going after even higher energy density in these semi-solid state batteries. Now, semi-solid state batteries are not the mythical concept of purely solid state. In fact, manufacturers are beginning to manufacture semi-solid state batteries now in China today. This is really happening. So this will be one of the most advanced battery gigafactories in the world. Now, I don't believe there's any other gigafactories in existence right now that are utilizing these kind of technologies in terms of mass production. This is an Australian first. Could even be a world first. Whatever it is, it's a game-changing factory for Australia. It's a game-changing market for Australia. And I'm so excited to see this happening. What are your thoughts? Let me know in the comment section below. Thank you for watching, my friends. This is the future. Have a great day.